Well, this is big, both literally and figuratively. The Chicago Sky started the offseason without a first round draft pick, but when Monday night's WNBA draft finally rolled around, they had two. And they went huge with their number three selection. The Chicago Sky select Camilla Cardoso. Yeah, that's right. That was a reaction at the Sky's official draft party. Fans are hoping Camilla Cardoso can bring some championship experience. She will with her after coming off a 38-0 championship season. And her second national title with South Carolina. Four picks later, the Sky took LSU star Angel Reese, who led the SEC in scoring and rebounds in each of the last two seasons. The so-called Bayou Barbie led LSU to its first ever national championship in 2023. I think it's going to be great. Um, she's a great player. I'm a great player. So two great players together. Nobody's going to get no rebounds on us. <laughs> Bringing my winning um, leadership, my winning mentality. I wanted more for myself. I wanted to start over. I feel like I had been in a high for since the national championship, and I want to hit rock bottom. I want to be a rookie again. I want to be knocked down by vets, and I want to be able to get up and grow and be a sponge. So I'm just super excited to play with the amazing players and against amazing players. You know, this is a chess match, and uh, we actually got every player that we had designed to get. And uh, this is an exciting moment for us, exciting moment for the city, and it's an exciting moment for the Chicago Sky organization. Well, no surprise at the top of the draft. So oh, guess who? Yeah, everybody's darling. Indiana Fever taking Caitlin Clark, number one overall superstar out of Iowa. NCAA's all-time leading scorer. Now her fans will see just how well her game translates from college to the pros. Joining us now is our own Jory Paris, expert in the WNBA realm. And let, let's keep it right there with Caitlin Clark. I mean, you know, truly changing the game at 22 years old. What is it about her that makes a cross section of fans, men, gravitate toward the TV? We know that empirically. I and mean, people were going to the TV to watch this year's Final Four, and it was remarkable. Be better than the men's, I'll go off on a limb and say that. Uh, can't you keep that going in the pros, you think, Jory? Well, look, yeah, first, I mean, that national championship game with Caitlin Clark drew a record 18.9 million viewers. So she clearly has drawn viewers from the beginning of her, her career all the way until the end. I don't see that changing anytime soon, and I don't see her play and consistency necessarily changing either. Of course, it's always going to be a bit of a transition when you're going to the next level, and the age gap alone is going to mean a little bit of an adjustment for her, so we'll see how that works. But that logo, that patented logo three that has everyone running to their televisions is so smooth, and I said it before, but I'll say it again. The consistency with Caitlin Clark, I think, is what's so special. She averages, what, nearly 30 points a game on the college level, and um, the NCAA all-time leading scorer, that's what it's all about is, is the consistency with her. And not only that, but the vision on the court too, right? It's not just scoring points. It's the assist factor. It's how she sees the players around her. It's just a, a, a different thing. It's something special that we haven't seen before. So it's going to be an adjustment at the next level, of course. But I think she's proven enough in her career going to back-to-back -back national championship mm -hmm. games that she's consistent and obviously a very talented player. Yeah, now with the Sky, they went with two big first-rounders, pick at 6-7. Uh, Camilla Cardoso from North South Carolina. They beat, of course, Iowa in the finals. And Angel Reese from LSU. Now, Reese has been a bit of a reputation, a bit of a wild card. Um, what do you think she's going to bring to Chicago? Because she can be great, and sometimes it seems like she can be distracted. I think no matter what, she's going to be a draw. But is she going to bring her game? Well, look, yeah, you just said it. Angel Reese is a star, and she earned that reputation first and foremost by her play on the court, right? This is a player mm -hmm, that yeah. also averages, what, 18 and 12. Um, the personality thing is also what contributes into earning the reputation of a star. I think it's part of what's made people draw into that. Angel Reese is, is still a dominant force and was this year in the college game. She talked a lot about after losing in the final four um the you know everything that she's had to go through but she also has proven that she's she's strong has that personality i don't see that being dampered um under bright lights of the wnba and 
I think she's going to continue to produce as well, especially in that new look front court with Camila Cardoso, no longer SEC foes. Those two, I know they're going to be excited to be on the same team and to be teammates. So as uh, Cardoso said there, teams are going to struggle to get rebounds against them with that size and with those star personalities. Yeah, absolutely. So the Sky are a really a new look team this year. What are you expecting to see from them? I mean, it's like you bring in these two names and I'm thinking, but I don't, I don't know the incubation period in the WNBA, you know, do they, you know, like it takes years for an NBA, an NFL quarterback to mature. They don't come out of college and start right away. Um, I mean, but I'm looking at the sky. I'm like, dang, this is a team now. This is like an automatic contender. Am I, was that wishful thinking or is that a possibility here? Well, that's the whole thing with the sky this year, right? As we'll see, obviously they, got what they wanted in the draft, which was two stars to build around. That was the whole thing with not having, of course, Kalia Copper trading her away this offseason. You knew it was going to be a new look team. Just from that alone, losing that uh, last championship player that they had from 2021. But then you've got a new head coach in Teresa Weatherspoon. I know Angel Reese said after the draft she's excited to play for somebody that, you know, Kim Mulkey also coached. There's a little bit of a connection there. But in terms of expectations for this team i think that's what's going to be so fun about this season is that this was such a highly anticipated star studded wnba draft class that it feels like it's going to be a new experience because of what we just saw on the college level from these girls regardless so i think the expectation is it truly i know i hate to say it being like an expert as you so call but it truly is kind of wait and see because these girls are are young and um going to be integrated here quickly the turnaround is very quick from college so we'll see if they yeah. can carry some of that momentum into their new league as well either way it is exciting uh jory paris i know probably no, no one's more excited than you because you're going to be covering it uh we appreciate you joining us for the insight right now thank you jory of course thanks for having me